this video we're going to talk about effluent filters and in order to do that I'd kind of like to describe to you uh, just a basic septic system using a drain filled dose pump uh, connected to the septic tank like you see in the image in front of you. Uh, obviously we start at the home that's where the waste is generated. Uh, people use toilet sinks, showers, laundry, all those kind of things end up going down the drain they follow this pipe into the septic tank. Of course, here we got a little uh, clean out at the home. Most, most places this is required by plumbing codes, so someone can unscrew this and access this line. Um, but I digress. The sewer comes into the septic tank here. The solid material settles out into what we call the scum layer and the sludge layer. And uh, that essentially creates a clear zone uh, before we get to this little guy right here, which is the effluent filter. That's what we're going to talk about primarily today. Um, the effluent is filtered through this and eventually goes into the dose tank for the drain field. So this pump here can be connected to, you know, either a pump up hill to a gravity drain field. So it could go to a D box or directly into a drain field lateral into a sand mound, um, various kinds of systems, um, or it can go into uh, a pressurized drain field with laterals in it. Of course, the sand mound is pressurized too. Uh, that pump's controlled by an electrical com control panel, typically, uh, etc. Uh, the effluent filter, if we go back to this unit here, this is primarily what I want to talk about today. And the effluent filter is advantageous in many ways over just having a sanitary T in this position because it does filter the effluent and it does remove solid materials and protects the pump and drain field from solid materials either plugging the impellers of the pump or sending solid material out to drain field out to the drain field to cause the drain field to fail prematurely the other advantage of an effluent filter is if you happen to neglect your filter um, specifically if you happen to neglect your septic tank and these sl sludge layers and scum layers begin to build up over time and eventually start to enter the effluent filter um, the effluent filter will pretty much stock, stop that activity and keep any solid material from eventually really shoving a large amounts of solids large amount of solids out your drain field uh, alternatively with a sanitary tea uh, that solid material would be get would get pushed into the dose tank, uh, fill up the dose tank with solid material. The pump would try to pump it, possibly get plugged depending on the pump model and type and solids handling capability. Um, but in a lot of cases, quite a bit of that solid material would eventually reach the drain field and cause some serious drain field issues. So we don't want that to happen. So you got a, a couple, a uh, couple protections that the effluent filter affords you as a homeowner and um, that would specifically be to clean up the effluent. So how much does it clean up the effluent before it gets into the dose tank? Again, it does improve the quality, the BOD, biological oxygen demand. So that's basically the measurement of uh, digestible biological material in the waste. Uh, on average, BOD out of a septic tank is around 145 milligrams per liter. And that would carry over into the dose tank and, and that would get pumped to the drain field. With an effluent filter, that drops to 134. That's about 11% reduction. Um, that's fairly significant, but not, not a lot. BOD is, is a lot of times uh, suspended in solution, so that can carry through a filter, uh, regardless of how fine you screen it. The total suspended solids, on the other hand, or TSS, uh, on average leaves a septic tank without an effluent filter about 84 milligrams per liter. With an effluent filter you get a reduction to 35 milligrams per liter and that's about a 65 percent reduction. Uh, the source for this information is small and decentralized wastewater management systems by Kreitz and Tamangalis and that's basically a college textbook for uh, professionals in the on-site wastewater industry and a pretty common source that people cite for these these figures. So let's talk a little bit about the effluent filters themselves and different methods of construction, different types. Of course, like any commercial product, there are, you know, 
quite a few, quite a number of different types of effluent filters available on the market. And some effluent filters have more capacity, more surface area. Some effluent filters are constructed differently. Um, some of the differences include the effluent filters being constructed either with more of a mesh type screen or slots that are that are cut into uh, the effluent filter itself and so the the waste can either pass through the mesh or in the case of the slots units uh, the, the slots take the effluent and allow the effluent to pass through the slots. Most are rated for a a size of slot or holes in the mesh. Most commonly we see 1 8 inch. Uh, there are effluent filters that go down to 1 16th and 1 32nd inch. Um, but 1 8 inch used to, usually is a pretty effective size for reducing the total suspended solids and BOD like I mentioned before. We also have effluent filters that retrofit to an existing sanitary T. And so sometimes it's convenient to if you have an existing system with no effluent filter and say for example you listen to this video and you decided you wanted to buy an effluent filter and have one installed you can actually retrofit your sanitary tea with that so they're kind of nice products but they do tend to be somewhat limited in, in, in capacity so you'd have to clean those more frequently than some of the commercially available pre-installed units uh, so how are filters typically rated if, if you look at a filter an effluent filter you're going to be looking for one that has a, a high rating in regards to flow area. Now, a lot of these filters are rated in a number of different ways. Some of these ways include surface area. Some of these ways include um, slot length, if it's a slotted effluent filter. Some of these ways include uh, uh, flow capacity, as outlined by the manufacturer. I'd be a little bit wary of some of those ratings simply because the correlation between cleaning intervals and um, open area is a direct one. So ultimately, if you find a filter with the most open area possible, you're going to be addressing the cleaning of that effluent filter much less frequently than you would if you had a filter with less open area. So really, how often should this filter be cleaned. You know, our recommendation is probably once every four years. That is really up to you. If you want to clean it every year, every six months, and you want to save some money on the effluent filter, they're all fairly inexpensive. So spending a little bit extra on a little larger one really isn't going to cost you that much up front. But certainly you can decide how often you want to clean it and then buy the effluent filter according to your expectation. Uh, again, we like to clean them or or match effluent filters to customers sites that need to be cleaned every four years that gives them a chance to you know use the system of course ultimately in some cases the septic tank needs to be pumped occasionally we try to correspond to that four years is probably pretty low in terms of pumping requirements but certainly you could go in there and check the effluent filter check the uh, scum and sludge layers in the tank and then you know clean the filter and pump the tank accordingly In commercial applications, the effluent filters are sized based on the service interval of the site. So they could actually be set up to where the operator is intending to clean that filter every six months or every year or every two years. And those filters can be purchased in larger sizes for commercial applications to accommodate the service interval that's outlined in the system operation maintenance manual. So as I mentioned, the selection of an effluent filter, if you're going on the web or to your local supply house looking for an effluent filter for your application, you want to be looking for a couple things. And that flow area rating is, is the primary one. So you can decide on a filter that will give you an appropriate mean time between effluent filter interval cleaning. You also want to find one that is easy to service. In this particular case, in this image, you see an effluent filter down in the septic tank and you see that the handle is extendable up into the riser and so in the case of some effluent filters don't have an extendable handle you'd have to lean down into the tank and reach further into there to get the effluent filter out whereas this one you can certainly just pop the lid uh, reach for that handle pull the effluent filter out clean it you know slide it back in and 
put the lid on and you're done. So what factors, uh, you know, obviously outside of the flow filter area determine how often the effluent filter needs to be clean? Well, one of those factors is the size of your septic tank and um, regulatory requirements usually dictate the size of your septic tank on your home and that's typically dictated by the state or county you live in. Uh, but if you're installing a new septic system and the regulatory requirements for septic tanks are say for example a thousand gallons and you decided to upsize that septic tank to 1500 gallons that will substantially improve the performance of your effluent filter and increase the mean time between cleanings of that filter itself because you're just going to get a lot better scum and sludge settling in the tank before the clear zone um, before that solid material reaches the effluent filter so that clear, clear zone tends to get more stratified in a larger tank and the primary reason for that is is your hydraulic retention time in the tank the tank you know, has more time, the liquid and solid material have more time to separate before they reach the effluent filter. But also the number of occupants in the home. Uh, you have more people in the home, you're going to produce more waste and water. That's going to, you know, cause the septic tank to uh, hydraulically not function as well as it would if there was less flow coming into it. And so more solid material would reach that effluent filter in that case. Uh, the habits of the folks in the home, so if they're using the garbage disposal or other types of things that could cause additional waste going down into the system, uh, excessive laundry, those sort of things, um, sometimes people uh, operate on a septic system or an on-site system as they would operate on a, a city system with just a gravity pipe. And honestly, with a septic system, you got to be a little careful of what you flush down the toilet or put down the drains and that can have an effect on how often that effluent filter needs to be cleaned. So the Idaho requirements for effluent filters and this is kind of an interesting discussion um, and and if you're not from the state of Idaho obviously this stuff doesn't apply to you but it's interesting in that um, effluent filters are not required in Idaho for gravity flow septic systems. So unlike the the graphic you see in front of you, if you've got a gravity flow system where the septic tank is connected directly to the drain field with no pumping equipment, then you can just install a sanitary T on the uh, discharge end of the septic tank that goes into the drain field. You know, like I said, it might not be a bad idea to have one there, but it's not a requirement. So you have to have in Idaho an approved screening device before the effluent pump that pumps to the drain field and that's just a state requirement that can happen or that can be determined or, or selected in two ways you can either use a bio vault or some kind of pump vault that has a screen either around the pump or a cartridge that's part of a vault system that goes into the dose tank that screens the effluent before it goes into the pump or you can use an effluent filter in the septic tank like we've been talking about The, uh, the third and more interesting requirement in Idaho for effluent filters is that the effluent filter must have a plug-off device. So when you pull the filter, the cartridge itself that the filter goes into must have a mechanism for closing off flow through the system. So, um, and so on any, any effluent filter installed pump systems where the effluent filter is required, if it's installed in the septic tank, it has to have that, that plug-off device. Now, the interesting thing about that is that there's only a, well, really one manufacturer that makes that. I think it's a patented design. So that's a proprietary feature of one manufacturer. Someone did a pretty good job uh, getting their filter approved in the state of Idaho, and now some of the other brands are, are not allowed because of that feature requirement. Uh, I've been told by uh, folks at the Technical Guidance Committee, I wasn't actually at the committee when that portion of the guidance was adopted. Um, they basically state that it's, it's going to be more difficult for a homeowner to remove that filter and basically toss it away. So if they start getting nuisance alarms, or, or not alarms, but if they start getting backups into the house and it's attributed to the effluent filter, and they're obviously not really interested in cleaning it, they're gonna be less likely to pull that filter out and just toss it in the trash because the plug-off mechanism will 
back up the sewage into the home so they'll have to spray it off and run back out there and toss it back in the, the, the housing. The other thing that the plug-off device is, uh, is advertised to do is it keeps solid material out of, in this case, the pump tank when you're cleaning the filter. But in reality, the entrance area of most of these filters are in the clear zone of the septic tank, and so that clear liquid that's stratified already in the septic tank is going to possibly push through when you remove that filter. You might get a little bit of solid material that moves through in that short period of time that you have that filter removed, but it's not it's of little consequence to the pump system. A lot of times that solid material, if it does carry over, um, will break down in the dose tank or sink to the bottom. And so you're not going to really see too much of an issue with that uh, in the systems of the filters that do not have that plug off device. Um, RC Worsting Company is currently working on a proposal to ask the Technical Guidance Committee to consider filters without, without close off mechanisms for use in pumping applications for the following reasons. Filters that are available with a close-off mechanism are not really designed for higher flow applications. So in cases where, let's say possibly commercial applications or higher flow residential applications where we want protection for a low head pump like you see pictured here, where we don't have an effluent filter around the pump system, um, there are other brands of filters that we would like to use and and uh, get specified into jobs that have a, a lot higher filter flow area than the ones available from the manufacturer that has the plug-off device. And again, I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, saying these these filters that have the plug-off device are bad filters or anything else. They just don't have a lot of options, in my opinion, in terms of scaling up to larger flows. They would have to be maintained really frequently. So we're looking to possibly have the Technical Guidance Committee entertain other options in filters that don't have that plug-off device. Um, some of the filters that have the plug-off device are fairly low in flow area, and so by allowing other filters that don't have that, possibly we could open it up to filters that have more flow area, uh, potentially eliminating the problem of the homeowner removing the filter and being inclined to toss it because a filter with a high flow area the homeowner wouldn't really be nuisanced by cleaning that filter frequently. In some cases, a low head pump is the best option for dosing a drain field. And as I mentioned before, the filter in the septic tank, it'd be nice to have options there to allow us to do that. Um, when you get into really large commercial applications, uh, manufacturers don't make pump vaults that are large enough for pumps bigger than four inches in diameter and so a six inch diameter pump you can't buy a pump vault for that and so we would like the option to put in especially in commercial applications larger effluent filters uh, to properly filter the effluent before it goes into a low head pump application. The state requires risers to grade over effluent filters so if you do install an effluent filter in a pump system like the one you see here, a riser is required so the homeowner can access that and clean it. And an interesting fact, currently there's no filter sizing requirements called out in the TGM. So you could pick any filter on the market for your residential system as long as it's approved in the Idaho guidance. There are uh, a limited number of options when, when picking an effluent filter. One of them is you can install a high water alarm, like you see in the, in the photograph here, or the drawing here. This alarm would give you an indication in the control panel, and it could, could activate an alarm in your existing control panel, or it could be a separate alarm panel that it's connected to. And so if the filter plugs up, the liquid level in the septic tank rises, activating that alarm and causing the alarm to go off, letting the homeowner know that it's time to clean the effluent filter before sewer backs up into the home. So it's kind of a nice nice little safeguard, but I don't see many of those. Quite frankly, I've never seen any of those, but it's, uh, it's really a good idea. So we've got a little short video here uh, showing me cleaning a four inch effluent filter in an Advantech system. And I'll run that now, let you guys kind of take a look at that and see how that's done. It's, it's pretty quick and easy and it's really not difficult. This filter does not have the handle extended into the riser. It'd be a heck of a lot easier if it did, but in this case it doesn't, so I have to reach way down into the tank and 
and uh, you'll see that. All right, so we're going to clean the uh, effluent filter on this Advantix system. It's not a bad idea to glove up. Reach down into the tank. You can see this one is pretty dirty, although it was just cleaned in June. It is now middle of September, middle end of September. I'm going to set it down here. In the septic tank at the sanitary tea. Got some water handy. Now I'm just gonna spray it off starting at the top. Clean it down. Let's clean the top. Clean it all the way down to the bottom. And you're gonna want to spin it. The other side. I have to get right in the middle. Pretty full of air. I like to be pretty clean. And it's going to be nice and white. Which is the original color. Not chunky brown. Let's get it all out of there. Looking pretty new. Right off the top a little bit. Make it look brand new. Take a look at it. A few things on this side. I'm hit again. So again, other side of the tank. Make sure it's seated. Voila. We're done. So you can buy cleaning brushes and filter cradles to help make the filter cleaning easier and more effective so the brushes can get into you know some of the places that you can't spray off with a hose and the cradles allow you to uh, more easily rest the filter over the riser for cleaning. I haven't ever really seen a huge need for any one of these products. We've done a lot of filter cleaning without them, but they do tend to make the job a little bit easier. So the primary option for filtering effluent in a septic system is a high head pump filter vault. So the high head filter vault originally was created as more of a basket type system. It was a big basket or screen that had a PVC shroud around the basket itself and it had holes drilled um, a ways up from the bottom of the tank where the water flowed into and filtered through the basket. What happened with these systems, well let me let me digress, the pump would go down in the basket and the effluent before it got to the pump would be filtered. What happened with these baskets in a lot of cases is, is because they were circular, uh, typically 12-15 inches in diameter, and, and the screen went all the way around the exterior of the, the basket part, they didn't really have a lot of screening surface area and so a lot of times you'd see that those filters plugged up pretty quickly and ultimately some of those filters would tend to kind of crush down on the pump and so some manufacturers put rings in there to support the the filter itself and, and that that kind of worked well but it really didn't solve the problem so other other manufacturers, some manufacturers came up with, you know, more of a cartridge style where you have a high head effluent pump or a four inch kind of well style pump in next to the basket. And so the basket would filter the effluent and then the effluent would pass into the pump area of the filter vault and, and the basket was really separate from the pump and it wasn't around the pump, but the water had to pass through the filter in order for the pump to pump it out to the drain field. And then as you see in the picture here, the, the float system was, was set above the basket, so the pump would operate on those floats inside the vault above the basket, or not basket, but the cartridge that was in the, uh, in the effluent filter vault. 
Um, what this did is, is increase dramatically the filter flow area of these types of filters. In some cases, if you compare the filter flow area you know, in residential applications of the filter vaults compared to just the effluent filters like we talked about, uh, you, you're going to see dramatically more screening area or flow area, um, in some cases up to four times. So what you can expect as a homeowner with a filter vault like this is really super long times between cleaning. Plus you're installing this in the septic tank as opposed or in the dose tank as opposed to the septic tank. So you get one more kind of level of treatment prior to going into the the filter vault and ultimately that effluent is even a little cleaner by the time it gets to that location. So these tend to really last a long time before cleaning. Um, you know very consistent they last uh, as long as the septic tank does in terms of pumping intervals and so the, the filter vault is a very low maintenance item. But one of the primary things that the filter vault, effluent filter vault does for you is it does allow you to use a high head effluent pump. And these high head effluent pumps um, are kind of revolutionary in the wastewater industry in that they are very efficient, um, somewhat lightweight, so they're very easy to service. They're uh, rated typically for up to and sometimes over 300 daily starts and we've found over the past 30 years of using these types of pumps that they last an incredibly long time and so when compared to the low head system a vault system with a high head pump would be probably a higher cost option but definitely would be a longer term lot less maintenance options so a really solid platform for filtering your effluent to the drain field and protecting the drain field while not causing the homeowner you know much angst in terms of operation and maintenance so that's really the the overview of effluent filters and i hope you've enjoyed this presentation today and please uh, subscribe to our channel and find a lot of these products on rcworst.com. That's www.rcworst.com. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.